Today on the bench, I want to tell you up the Roche Lake Special. This is a leech pattern that has been very effective at Roche Lake every year we fished it, in the spring and the fall. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the pattern. For the hook, we'll use a size 12 2X long nymph hook, some 8 aught olive thread to tie with, a 1 8 inch gold tungsten bead as the bead, some light olive sparkle dubbing as the body, some red copper or ultra wire for the wire, some pearl blue angel hair for the tail, and some peacock light bright for the head. To start the fly off, I've tied in my thread and I've moved to the rear of the hook. And I've taken a small little clump of our angel hair and I'm going to tie it in at the tail. Always go behind. And then I'm just going to cut it again about an inch long, half an inch to an inch long, uh, different, different lengths with my scissors and that's just going to form a small tail off the back just to give it a little quint. The next step to the fly is we want to form the body and there's different ways to form that body. You want a dubbing brush or a dubbing loop. A lot of people will form a dubbing loop with the thread and you'll put the dubbing in and then wind it up, wrap it forward. But I like this dubbing block and I show everybody how to use this dubbing block right now. So let's go, go through it step by step to form our dubbing brush that we're going to put on to form the body. To start using the dubbing block we want to take our our red wire, which I like to use. I'm going to take a length about double the length of the dubbing block and cut that off. What we're going to do is put one, one end in, a little clamp on the end, just to secure it. Wrap it around our post, go around our, our turning mechanism, and just hold the other end off while we get our dubbing ready. So that secures the wire in place. Now that we have the wire laid in the track, we're ready to put the dubbing in. And when you put the dubbing on, make sure it's very, very fine. You don't want big clumps of dubbing. You want this very, very light all the way through. So I'm putting on just the body dubbing, which is all the nice light olive on the back end. And then I'll move to the head end and put that peacock light bright, a little clump just at the very head end. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to take a little bit of this Peacock Light Bright, and I'm just taking just an ever so small bit, just to put it at the very head, and that's just to give it a little color transition from the light to the dark at the head end. And again, keep it quite fine. Now that we have all the dubbing on the track, I'm going to take the wire off the one end, bring it forward and trap all my dubbing. Take the wire off the other end that I have secured. Hold both ends with my hand on one end and just turn to form the dubbing brush. And just wind it forward. And I don't like to wind it forward until it breaks. So you just keep going until that end breaks off just like that. And you form a nice dubbing brush. Now that we have our dubbing brush formed, we're going to tie it in right behind the bead just to make sure the body stays even. And wrap it back to the hook bend. I wrap my thread forward again, and we'll just wrap the stubbing rush forward to form the body. And we'll pick this, all the dubbing out a little bit later. And you can pick it out as you go, just to keep the body nice and thin. Now that the body's tied in, I'm gonna take my whip finisher and I'm gonna whip finish right behind the bead. And once the whip finish is done, I'm going to take my dubbing brush, a little pick, the dubbing pick, and we're going to pick out our dubbing to form a nice leachy body. So there it is, the finished Roche Lake Special. Now as I showed you, I formed a dubbing brush using the dubbing block, just a handy way for me to create these nice dubbing brushes. But you can also do it with a thread, you can tie it over like many people know. So any way you want to form that dubbing brush, it's just personal preference.